Hi. Hi, Isold. Hi, Vipke. Very nice to meet you and big congratulations uh, on your film, but also on the award, obviously. Thank you so much. It's a real honor to be um, awarded last year and also to be um, be part of this event this year as well. Yeah, it's it's a, the the Kultura Society is a wonderful, wonderful um, society of, uh, of film lovers. But I have to say, I have I loved your film. I, I loved it the first time I saw it and I've seen it three times since. And I think it's a beautiful, beautiful um, piece of filmmaking. So it's a much deserved um, uh, uh, award. Thank One of you. the things I really loved about it, how self-assured it is. Like it's your first uh, feature film, if I understand it correctly, but yes. it's, it, it has like, it has a, it has very much an assuredness about it that is interesting, like in, in the imagery, um, but also in the storytelling and the pacing, like it seems slow, but then it actually jumps forward uh, yeah. through all the plot points uh, and be and focuses on the emotions. And I'm wondering, is that something that you were conscious of doing already in the script phase or did it come about as you were shooting it or was that paring down in the editing? I'm just wondering about the process. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a, first of all, a very long, long process. And, um, and I'm sure much of it is, you know, I'm, I'm aware of the decisions, but also it's just so many things. I mean, as you know, as a filmmaker yourself, so many things have to come together for it to work. Um, and yes, it is my first feature, but I had made four, I directed four short films pr prior to that. I, I lived in um, New York City, although I'm, I live in Iceland now, I'm, I'm from Iceland, but I worked as an editor in New York City. So I, I have this kind of very linear kind of editor's mind maybe perhaps. Yes. So I feel like in this, you know, in the screenwriting as well, I kind of, I, I think kind of in, in frames, um, I think in shots. In, in a way, of course, you know, in emotion, like that's where the story comes from. Originally, it's I want to tell this emotional story between two individuals. And but um, but in the actual kind of pacing of it, I feel like, yeah, I, I tend to wish, you know, so especially when I'm lost in the writing, I kind of pretend like I'm in the theater watching the movie. I'm like, da -da -da -da, what's you know, looking for the rhythm. And um, right. sometimes I play some sp specific types of um, kind of abstract the music um, to kind of get myself into the mindset and the rhythm of the of the film, and um, so you know, I'm, and while I'm not a musician at all, I, there's there's something rhythmic about the thinking. Well, there it. is, yeah, there is very much because like like there's a lot of sort of technical stuff that you could have gotten hung up on, like all the mm -hmm. immigration stuff, all the the poverty, like even the losing like even the the way the interaction with the, the 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 friend's mother like it's they are so minimally handled but yeah. beautifully and self-assured I, I I think some of it comes out of fear of um of giving people too much because I'm also very aware of you know you want to keep them engaged in a way where they're not bored and where um where people keep kind of guessing people you know I'm not a, a fan of films with that, where the people are spoon fed too much. You, you give them too much, like, okay, I, I get it. I don't need all, all this all this information. And um, so something slightly abstract, a little bit vague. We, life is not clean cut always. It is a little bit chaotic and we don't know, know the answers to all the questions. And you might meet somebody and have some general idea of their background. I don't feel like I have to, Tell them everything about their background. And I, well, this I, is, I mean, this is, and you did this wonderfully. But as, as as a filmmaker, I guess my question is: sometimes when I write a script, yeah, you give it to funders, they're like, "Well, I don't understand." And then I you mean, write, there was all. I mean, there was all of that. It, it it wasn't. I mean, didn't happen overnight. The film. I um, I, I lived in New York City for ten years, working in film and editing, and get, getting my master's degree and spending you know time embracing myself immersing myself in this whole world of film coming back to iceland 2011 maybe i said one early anyway 2011 came back and thought i would be like you know let me quickly write a screenplay and make a movie and uh, of course it's you know it's not like that it's like half a decade later you're on on set but um so it's 
yeah, it's the funders, of course. Yeah, there are funders that said no, you know, especially maybe in the early early time or something, or something is too vague. And, and at the at the end of the day, funders are just normal human beings with different tastes. People have so right. people are coming from all different directions, and that's something I think I had to learn also through the process. You know, you kind of learn to not take things personally, and right. uh, and also a reminder to myself is that. Everyone is operating from some level of fear that is fear of mistakes. And that goes for producers or financiers or funders and us as filmmakers is we're always afraid of like, is this the right decision? Yeah. Is it because, you know, we're always and especially as directors, we're faced with decisions constantly. Yeah. Like, is the script getting, you know, is it right? Is the casting is this first this lead character of ours, uh, Christine right. Thora, who I was very determined about but you know she hadn't done a whole lot of film in Iceland so you know you have to make the case and then you have to be, you have to be like am I sure I feel like I'm sure but am I sure um but I was I was kind of, I felt very strongly about her same with Papadita and in, in um and the, the Belgian actress um originally from Guinea Bissau um she uh, you know I thought I felt very strongly about her but you still you're faced with choices all the time um about well you did you did a lot of very very good uh, choices so the the actress is obviously something that was going to be my next question yeah about yeah the actors because they're so amazing and maybe we'll just talk quickly about both of them because the iceland i thought they were both incredible um um kristen she she was really interesting because in north america anyways you you hardly ever find actresses like that with that physicality because it is mm -hmm. such a focus on like i'm gonna just say surface beauty yeah uh, she has like she really owned that part and i bought her the, the, the struggle that she was going through but mm -hmm. yeah tell me a little bit about how you found her yeah i had i had seen her in a play in reykjavik some years before casting and i thought to myself wow she has this intensity about her she i could just feel her talent, I could just feel how what a strong performer she is. And yet I thought, hmm, I don't really see her in films in Iceland. That's strange. Let me, you know, and I just kind of kept her in the back of my mind. And then finally, when everything kind of came together, the script, the funding and all that, and we were in a position to cast, she was one of the actresses brought in. And um, one of the roles or the scenes that she had to had to deliver were was a scene that we call um the moment of truth where these two women sit in a car and they kind of open up a little bit to one another to the extent that they are willing and able to do that because up, up until then they've been quite closed and reserved with their emotions and uh, and it's a scene that i was afraid of myself as the writer because I was like, ah, oh, it's a scene that if it's not done well, it can be really cheesy and awkward and silly or stupid or something. That was, a, again, you know, operating from fear. Um, I was afraid that that would, yeah, that potentially couldn't work. But she did it in such a way where I forgot that that was my own writing. And she goes so deep and she has such layered performances that, um, that I really felt for her and, you could kind of see her kind of on the verge of tears, but never going too far. She just finds that perfect balance right. of giving you a, a lot without going right. too far. So was and, it a fight to be able to cast her? Um, I mean, well, you know, off the record, um, <laughs> I mean, there was, um, let's say what you know i would have been willing to cast her you know with within those few weeks where we were doing the casting but uh yeah I had to, I, I'll, I'll say i will just say here very honestly i had to wait for quite a number of months to be able to confirm her right. and and again i think it's just people are like well have you checked so and so have you checked so and so so and so has done more this and this and that and that's just the reality that you know people go through because it's you're bringing in somebody that you know doesn't have like box off, you know, and I'm talking Icelandic terms, yeah, box yeah, yeah. Office, whatever that means. But in the, in, you know, in some cases, yeah, there's people are looking like we have to sell. How do we sell this? Right. And I'm always operating from 
I don't care. That's not my, that's not the reason I'm making this movie. I wouldn't be in film if that was the reason I'm, you know, within, I'm not drawn to, to that, to film for that reason. So I go from a different, totally different place. I'm just like, who, who can do this correctly well? And the great thing about Kristen Thoda also was because, because she hadn't done so much film at that point, she did so much preparation, so much homework. She brought, you know, every day she brought so much. I mean, she like pushed, you know, she was so mentally present. She was so incredibly present, um, preparing herself, listening to podcasts, listening to people who, who had perhaps, you know, had struggles, who had struggled with, you know, addiction, poverty, um, living in the car, just, you know, not succeeding. <laughs> And you can feel it. You can yeah. feel it. You can so, feel it. And, and the same with Papati Tasadio. Yes. So um, they were so, they were both, they, they shared that quality of, of really loving their art and really wanting to go the extra mile always and um, preparing just, yeah, being incredibly present at every moment. And that's, of course, I mean, it's a great place to be in. But also, I mean, there's also an intensity on the set because everybody wants to do, do so well. And of course, actors want more takes. I have a limited schedule because it's an independent film that have, we only have this much time. So yeah, there, I'll admit there were times when actresses were like, you know, wh why do you always say cut at, at, you know, this, at this point? And I'm like, it's because I got pressure from somewhere else. You know, everybody has pressure from somewhere. So I would love to give them as, you know. And I, right. but I, was, I said, don't worry. I will never call cut or end the, the scene unless we have it. You know, I won't, I won't fail you by, by finishing the, the, you know, the setup unless we we've delivered. So don't worry. No, and you did, you did not fail. I mean, the, the incredible thing about um, Bebita, Bebita is Papa that uh, I've seen some photos of her and she's actually quite glamorous. And... She's very glamorous. And I had no <laughs> idea because I, I went to Brussels for the, the casting. There were, you know, 10, 10 women who, who could have potentially taken the role. And she came in. So she dressed the part of an asylum seeker who was on the road, who had a difficult time. And she, you know, in a good way, fooled me into believing this. I was like, oh, this is just her, you know, feel so close to her reality. This must be her reality. Um, granted, she is um, an immigrant. She did, you know, immigrate from, from Guinea-Bissau. So she knows something as a child, of course. but, um, but, in, but, she's, but she's very beautiful, you know, glamorous woman in her everyday normal life. So, but she knew yeah. what the role required and um, knew that the director might, you know, maybe the director could be, could be limited in, 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 you know, imagination and, you know, came in very much looking like somebody who was going through a lot. <laughs> well, I mean, she's, she was absolutely incredible. I mean, what, this is going to sound weird, but one of the things I loved about it is the way she walks. Like they have several shots where she walks away. Yeah. It is in the way she walks, the determinedness, like, yeah. and hateness and determined at the same time. That's just... I don't know, I thought it was very yeah, she, it, yeah, exactly. I mean, she has that about her where she's this proud woman who is like struggling, but she's like, I'm not going to tell you about it. You know, I, yes, there is some, there are some things I'm dealing with, but I'm on a mission regardless. Like I'm also, well, I mean, also a fighter. I think one of the main reasons I love this movie so much is also because there's this idea of kindness mm -hmm. and that kindness, you know, kind of will rule the day. Yeah. Like that moment when the she sees um, the Islamic woman sleep in the car. Yeah. In the rain. Was yeah. that real rain or did you make the rain? No, that was Icelandic rain all the way. Okay. Not, that, not all that weather was just, you know, compliment <laughs> of, of Iceland. Thank you very much. So but, there was but nothing to take. So, but it's so perfect. Like she's in the rain. It's so miserable. She has every reason to walk away. She has every reason not to help. So yeah. After all, it's her who put her into this situation, and then she walks away. And again, it's like this beautiful thing. She walks away, and then it cuts to, and they're already they're waking up or falling asleep. I can't remember, but yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I think for some some of these moments where 
there's a difficult decision. I mean, again, like just like us, the filmmakers, the, the humans are dealing with decisions. And here she is, uh, you know, she sees something, she's like, wait, there's something off, let me check, uh-huh. And she recognizes who these people are. There's a woman and a child and she knows, and you know, part of her is like, this is not my problem. I'm, you know, th this, I can't, I can't get involved. And then, you know, there's this pause of like, but you know, but I have to. And I feel like we can all kind of relate to it of, you know, something you're like, well, I, I don't, I'm not obligated to help or become involved in this problem, but, but I'm human. And well, sometimes you just, you just can't help being human. Well, that's it. And ultimately her redemption comes out of that act of kindness, right? Mm -hmm. so yeah. It's a very hopeful message in that, in that way. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like, it wasn't conscious. It was just, it, it evolved in the writing because in the beginning right. it was, it was me wanting to talk about poverty and women in a car and a child and, you know, not being able to kind of right. get by. Right. And then uh, adding the story of the, uh, that's, the refugee, that's, you know. That's interesting because I had one more question, but I think we have to uh, wrap it up soon. But yeah. I had one more question, which was about this whole, like, my idea of Iceland is a, is a quite affluent country and a very just country. And it was so interesting to see that there are quite large holes in the safety net also. Yeah. So I was wondering, like, what was first, wanting to talk about that or wanting to talk about these two women? It was, I would say it was, it was about poverty first, because I mean, I was living in New York City during the economic crisis in Iceland. I observed it every minute of the day. I was obsessed with it. Of course, it affected my studies in New York, my Krona, my Icelandic currency became very devalued. Right. And uh, yeah, I felt angry. I was like angry. I mean, I hate capitalism. I, like, I'm like a fierce hater of, of capitalism, which has, has ruined so much. Um, so I was, I first thought I was, because I made a short film about somebody who is dealing with economic crisis. And so I thought my first feature would be kind of that. Right. And then as it as I evolved the material, um, I knew I wanted. I had that visual of a car, child, mother, not not having a home. Writing that for a while, six months, a year, probably, taking it to workshops, and then getting kind of little delicate notes saying, "I think your story needs to go do more. Like it's this is not enough, or it's too art European." Was the note? <laughs> um, anyway, so. While I was grappling with the film being too European, um, I observed more and more, um, or I, I started noticing stories in the newspaper in Iceland about refugees being stuck in between, you know, the system, um, sometimes being arrested on their way to Canada, going somewhere else. And, uh, and so I started attending talks, I became a, um, a volunteer at the Red Cross, I just became kind of involved in that community to, to understand more, got to know some people personally and, uh, and got to know a woman from Uganda right. who had fled due to her sexuality and became really um, excited about tackling this. I was like, this is what I really need to talk about. Right. And That's so, you know, then after that, you know, here's the cut to me sitting in the library being like this story and this story how to tell both right. and um, spending a lot of time at the, in this, the airport town where the film takes place. They have, they had an asylum there for refugees, which I would visit. I would just kind of spent time like in that area, photographing, procrastinating because writing is so <laughs> difficult and, uh, and yes, trying to look for inspiration. Right. And, uh, and dealing with it all a bit like it was a puzzle, like, okay. I, and at either moments, I mean, I knew kind of early on, like, I was like, I feel like I have an ending in me. Like, this is kind of what, where a film like this would end. And I know where I want to end it. Right. And I kind of know where it would start, but what, what do we do with the middle? Well, that's, you know, what, that's what I need. I need a beginning and an end. And then yeah. the the rest but it's not so easy <laughs> no i know exactly it's you know and uh 
And then you have these little breakthrough moments, as you know, as as a filmmaker yourself, when you're like, ah, I know how where they meet first, or I know where the turning point is. And then you have a little victory dance at the library. People have no idea why you're, <laughs> you know, celebrating in a you know your little personal victory lap. Yeah. And then you can continue like, okay. So there are the little mini victories that yeah. help it help you survive this grueling process of writing. Yeah, well, I hope uh, I hope this award, you will look at the award and I have a couple of, uh, up there <laughs> from the Club Tutors. It does help me, uh, you know, to keep going and to- Thank you. Yeah, it, it really means a lot. I'm really thankful um, to the society and for, to you for conducting this interview and, and hopefully I can, you know, attend in person one day, it would be amazing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's been an honor to uh, to be to have my work acknowledged by such an important society that focuses on independent artistic voices. So that that's what they do. That's what they love. And you did a beautiful, beautiful film. So I can't wait to see your next one. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.